Uh, a popular diet that has arisen in recent years is the paleo diet. And people are, some people are very curious about it. Some people are very adamant about it, either pro or con. And I just wanted to discuss some of the reasons why it's good and some of the reasons why it's bad with you. And hopefully this will help to uh, point you in the direction that will help you to do further research on your own or talk to a dietitian or nutritionist. Um, I would not recommend talking to regular doctors because regular doctors don't get enough education in nutrition and diet to actually make an informed decision. Um, I know that Dr. Mike, one of the famous YouTubers, did a very brief uh, thing with uh, certain kinds of diets, but it was by it was very, very, very anecdotal um, and not well carried out by him. Uh, I like the guy; I think he's fantastic, but that was not one of his high points. Okay, so the premise is that we are the same as our ancestors who uh, were living in the Paleolithic era. That's a big stretch because we're talking about how many thousands or millions of years? Let me look that up. Two and a half million years ago until 10,000 BC. So our most recent ancestors, it was 10,000 years ago. This by itself, unless they're using the term paleo anecdotally instead of based on solid research, um, or they're using it as a euphemistic say, thing to say, hey, this is, you know, based on uh, what our not-too-distant ancestors may, uh, may have eaten, in which case it's a really bad choice of uh, names. Um, yeah, it's right, right off the bat we have a problem because what our ancestors ate, what our ancestors could eat, and I'm not just talking about Homo sapiens, but also the Neanderthals, because we are mixed with Neanderthals and probably certain other uh, of the ancient humans. What we could eat then, or they could eat then, is going to have been significantly different from what our bodies can tolerate now. And also significantly different from what is actually available now because many of the plants and animals that were available 10,000 years ago until two and a half million years ago don't exist anymore. Some of them do, don't get me wrong, some do, but a lot of them don't. So that's a problem. Also, um, if you've heard about epigenetics, epigenetics is the study about how our environment, our activities, our, our lifestyle in general impacts the way our genes, our, our DNA, express themselves. Now, when I say genes, again, we're talking about genetics, not about blue genes or green genes or gray genes or purple genes. Sorry, Incredible Hulk. Um, so, yeah, this is... A problem. If we look at epigenetics again, we see that, for just focusing on food, what you eat routinely has an impact on which of your genes are repressed and which of your genes express themselves, so to speak. Not express like, hey, look at me. No, it's just like which become active and which become inactive. And that can result in things like diabetes happening or diabetes receding. Um, it can, it, it, there are so many different ways that eating uh, things can affect you. It also depends on not just your genetics, but the genetics of your parents and your grandparents and your great grandparents, at least three generations back. In other words, your genetics, your epigenetics as well, will also affect people, your descendants, up to three gener at least three, uh, up to three generations after you. So if you are doing things that are causing you lots of harm in terms of your health, that's going to be passed on to your kids and your grandkids and your great-grandkids, especially if you started doing that to yourself 
and the activations occurred prior to um, when your kids were produced. Not good. Okay. So that's the first problem. I'm sorry, the second problem. The first problem is, is our, our genetic makeup is extremely different uh, from the Paleolithic period. The second one is that epigenetics dictates based on how we behave, what we do, what we eat and all that, how, which gene, genes are expressed and which ones are turned off, so to speak. The third problem here and that I mentioned already is a lot of the foods that were eaten during that period are not available any longer or have been modified either through uh, just um, evolutionary selection or through manipulation by humans, crossbreeding and all that kind of stuff. So the next problem is that historically speaking, up until relatively recently, archaeologists and paleontologists and other scientists studying ancient civilizations found it very, very difficult in many cases, especially with uh, humans that lived uh, a nomadic lifestyle, for example, or lived in certain areas where the remains of food and, and so on would not e be easily fossilized. And so what, what's easily fossilized is bones. And so his, if you look at the history of history, you will see that the decision of scientists at that time, given the limitations of what they knew, was that people uh, back in those days, 10,000 years ago or more, well, really it's more than 10,000 years ago because we're talking about more like 12,000 years ago because we're in 2023 right now um, and beyond, uh, 12,000 years ago, um, we're eating an almost exclusively uh, meat diet. Now, let's be clear. There are societies, um, what you might call primitive societies in some cases, in different parts of the world where most, if not all, of the diet of those people is from animals. There are some in Africa, there are some in Asia, there are some in uh, South America, I believe, um, and of course in the Arctic Circle, the Inuits, or formerly known as the Eskimos, which is not correct. Um, and other groups in the Arctic Circle as well that are not part of the Inuits uh, chain of uh, tribes, I guess you could say. So we used to believe because scientists couldn't find complete dietary rec uh, records. And of course, going back that far, there were no written records and very little in the way of um, pictographic records uh, that would help them to understand except other than hunting animals. So it was believed that humans subsisted on an almost entirely animal-based diet. And so the assumption of the proponents of the paleo diet is that, number one, you have to eat a high animal diet. And you cannot eat anything that is processed or anything that did not exist back then. And <clears throat> there are other considerations. But basically, they insist that we need to try to mimic eating what people ate 12,000 years ago. <clears throat> which again leads us back to the problem that we are not those people. Genetically, digestively, we are not the same. Even our teeth are different to an, you know, to an extent, right? So that's a problem. However, more recent uh, evidence has been uncovered, literally uncovered, that demonstrates that actually, number one, uh, the food that was eaten by these ancient peoples was actually not just meat. It was a variety of grains and berries and fruits and vegetables and roots and mushrooms and all kinds of stuff. So that's a problem because the paleo diet people are saying, no, 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 you can't eat all those things because paleo people didn't eat those things. Another part of the problem if we assume 
that um, they were carnivores is that unless you come from a genetic background, like the people I've mentioned, including the Inuits, where the diet is normally very, very, very high in uh, meats without the in indications of diseases associated with high meat consumption, such as heart disease and cancer and diabetes, then not a good idea because you're probably going to get sick and maybe die if you don't stop. Like Paul Saladino, the doctor who is not particularly bright, in my opinion, listening to him talk, um, he actually had to back off the carnivore diet along with several other proponents of the carnivore diet. Now, there are some exceptions who, even though they're old now, they're still eating meat constantly and they're fine. But there are actually ancient humans that have been exhumed from ice and, and whatnot and they're still intact enough that uh, I don't know if they do it in, in an actual bi um, autopsy where they open them up or if it's a non-invasive. In other words, they use like um, MRI machines and CT machines and uh, scanners and stuff like that. But they were able to look at these people and discovered they had cancer. These people were, you know, these were people were strong meat eaters. They had cancer and they had heart disease. So the argument that people back then who were heavy meat eaters means that it was they were healthy and that you will be healthy if you're on the paleo diet. No, no. Now, are there any benefits to being on the paleo diet? There is one for sure. Paleo dieters don't eat processed food. Everything is whole food, okay? You don't go and buy a burger and french fries at Wendy's. You don't go get a Subway sandwich at Cousin's Submarines. You don't uh, buy a pizza at uh, Domino's. You don't even go to the gro a, a grocery store and buy prepared foods. You make your own food fresh and it's complete. In fact, more complete than what we eat now. Is that necessarily always good? No, not necessarily, because some of the things that you can eat whole, there are parts that will hurt you, parts that will even kill you. So obviously, you know, there are going to be exceptions as far as what do you eat the whole plant or the whole animal or do you throw away certain parts? Yes, you throw away certain parts. The point here is the, they did not have grocery stores and fast food chains and junk food to buy. They ate whatever they could find. They cooked it however they could cook it, if they had spices or they didn't have spices, but it was all freshly made. Or they used pickling processes and other processes like uh, salt storage or in smoking and stuff like that to preserve foods, drying foods out to make them last longer and things like that. But that was the extent of the processing that they could do, depending on which part of that very, very long time span we're talking about. You know, pickling is a more recent thing. Uh, salting and smoking and drying are, are older, much older. So does that mean that you should be eating jerky? Absolutely not. Processed meats have been shown to be as dangerous for your health as being exposed to, uh, I think it's plutonium. Yeah. Processed meats, and I include sausages and jerky and any other kind of a meat, because of the processes used, especially the high salt content, high sugar content potentially, and other things that are used, such as uh, nitrites and nitrates, uh, these things can make it much easier to get, say, cancer. Also, if you are from the genotype where your body doesn't process uric acid correctly, you can end up with gout because of eating too much meat and even drinking too much beer. And that feels like you've got pins and needles in your feet. Apparently, it's because you've got actually uric at crystals growing in your feet. It's excruciating, I'm told. So, if you want to imitate the paleo people, and you want to be healthy, the only thing you can actually take from that diet without knowing whether you are immune to the negative impacts of excessive meat consumption 
is don't eat processed food. That's it. For the vast majority of people, the paleo diet is, if not completely, mo it is mostly inappropriate for all the reasons that I've stated and probably others that I'm not aware of. So unless you have generation upon generation upon generation upon generation ad, lib uh, ad libitum, ad nauseum, ad infinitum, you cannot use the paleo diet and get better. You will probably initially, as with the carnivore diet, as with the ketogenic diet, as with um, high carb diets, as with a lot of other things, you will may initially experience relief, improvement, better health. But over the long term, even if it may be helping you with one particular problem or two particular problems or five particular problems, it will be creating other problems. Humans are not tigers and lions and bears. Oh my, we are humans. We are omnivores. If you want to be healthy, don't eat the paleo diet. Just stop eating processed foods. If you do nothing else, absolutely nothing else with your diet, stop eating processed foods. Eat whole foods, mostly plants, in moderation. Don't use a lot of salt and don't use a lot of sugar. Substitute sugar with something like sugar alcohol, sucralose, um, if you don't have PKU, aspartame, and so on and so forth. I realize that for many of you, this is going to be hard. But, I mean, do you really want to weigh 500 pounds, have all your joints be destroyed by the weight of your body, um, have diabetes and heart disease and cancer and all the other things, urticaria, I mean, there's a long, long list of illnesses that are caused by a bad diet. A very long list. And most of the people that are dying these days are dying either because of violence or accidents or, more commonly, their diet. I will be doing a separate video on a fast-track diet. Oh, I am not a medical expert. I have simply done a lot of research on not diet and nutrition to help myself to lose weight and uh, also to improve my uh, cardiovascular condition because I have various uh, problems with my cardiovascular system uh, that were that arose because of a bad diet, even though I didn't know it was as bad as that. Um, I have got preangina and palpitations in the form of PACs, PVCs, and VTs which is ventricular tachycardia. I don't remember what the other two mean, which is a fast heartbeat sometimes. Um, I also have hyper... Uh, uh, high blood pressure. Can't remember the words. Sorry. I'm losing my memory too, apparently. And I have, and this is probably why I'm having memory problems, I have uh, atherosclerosis, which is plaque in the arteries which is related to sodium and salt consumption. Um, so, yeah, um, I've done a lot of research and I know a bit. Uh, there are people out there that know way more than I do and I have discovered some of the best sources for information uh, to learn how to better take care of myself and yet I'm not, I'm not an expert in medicine. I'm not an expert in diet and nutrition. Um, and doctors are not experts in diet and nutrition either, unless they take it upon themselves to learn. Because most doctors only get about 24 hours worth of education in diet and nutrition. And so they can't tell you, even specialists, even in, in a field like cardiology, where 90% of the diseases are related to diet, most cardiologists can't help you, unless they're like interventionists perhaps. So. Talk to a professional who is very knowledgeable on diet and nutrition. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.